This week on the Vic Meyer Show, I've got a new friend. This is Buttercup, and she's from the Whitmore Animal Rescue right here in Mono County. And she's going to be with me for the next couple weeks. And isn't she awesome? There's a lot of great animals, cats and dogs, at the Whitmore Animal Shelter right here in Mono County and just outside of Mammoth Lakes. But more importantly, I realized that Buttercup is relatively unfamiliar with a lot of my earlier work. And from the numbers, so are most of you. So this week on the Vic Meyer Show, we are going to revisit some of my favorite Clamper monuments and historical markers. Starting with the Hilton Mines Monument that we just built this last September. If you ever wondered where those come from, Today's your lucky day. We're gonna visit the Lost Cement Mine. And I know that doesn't sound interesting, but it definitely is. And it is pretty much the cornerstone or the linchpin to the development of the entire Mammoth Lakes Basin. Talks about how much I love little side roads, byways, viewpoints, picnic areas. Mm -hmm. This rest stop is awesome. We're also gonna visit a mausoleum on the side of a highway. Let me say that again. In the woods across the road, right behind where I'm standing, lies the mausoleum of many Stoddard Lily. And probably my favorite monument of all is the legend of the lost slot machines and the treasure of June Lake. Rick Meyer in June Lake, California. And did you know at the bottom of that lake lies hidden treasure? So stay tuned. But first. Well, last night was fun. Weather's a little challenging today, but let's go build a monument. Driven by them, maybe you've stopped, maybe you won't even care. But if I've caught your interest, stick around and I'll show you how one of these is made. They're all different and they're all constructed differently. And uh, we usually use materials that are local. Curtis, Hello. you out here rock hounding? Yeah. I'd rock How do you know the difference between uh, one we're going to use and Liberite? Liberite? Yeah. Liberite there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, we just grab rocks and let these guys make the decision, right? Through inclement weather, we shall proceed. How are you feeling about it, Hayes? Would you say satisfactory? Yeah. 
up, go down and about, let's go down about a four. Get a little more, yeah. Well, that about does it. I'm going to have to wait till next week to see what it, what it looks like completed. That concludes today's project. Stay tuned for the unveiling of the newest Bodhi 64 historical marker and clamper monument. For centuries, this area has served as a thoroughfare from modern day travelers to pioneers to the area's many indigenous people. Seeing its first wheeled vehicles around 1856, this desert tower marks the location of the Mountain Springs Station. Originally just a stone house, it served as a store from 1862 to 1870. Ox teams navigated the 30% grade, bringing in supplies from the east. Then, in 1915, a wooden plank road ushered in the first motor vehicles. So, decided to come up here to Desert View Tower with my family. Spend some time together. Bust out the grill and enjoy the super blue moon. The stone Desert View Tower began construction in 1922. This is the rare occasion where we have two historical markers on one side, two monuments. One to memorialize the Mountain Springs grade and what that meant to this area, and the other to memorialize the Desert View Tower. San Diego real estate developer and then owner of Hakumba, Bert Vaughn, anticipated this area becoming a major international port to Mexico. And with that, he built the tower and dedicated it to the pioneers, highway and railway workers who ultimately helped develop the area. You're not trying to uh, start your own YouTube channel, are you? Not hardly. <laughs> kind of creepy, but so cool. A mausoleum of many Stoddard buildings. The story of Minion, Minnie Stoddard Lily. And in the woods across the road behind me lies the mausoleum of Minnie Stoddard Lily. Let me say that again. In the woods across the road, right behind where I'm standing, lies the mausoleum of Minnie Stoddard Lily, a homesteader, pioneer, and teacher of early Mendocino County. From 1904 to 1936, Minnie Stoddard taught in a one-room schoolhouse in the Andersonia Piercy area. For many years, she used a horse-drawn buggy to pick up some of her students to bring them to the school. In 1904, Minnie set out to homestead a claim on the South Fork of the Eel River and described her first night alone in her cabin as having a prayer on my lips and a pistol in my hand. She married William Lilly in 1905 in 1925, they purchased a 55-acre parcel of redwood trees simply because it contained the Fraternal Monarch, a 301-foot-tall tree with a burned-out center, which is now known as the world-famous tree house. Temporarily closed at the moment. When construction on the Redwood Highway began in 1929, the Lilies deeded land for the project to the state for $10, and the convict laborers working on the road lived in the treehouse during construction. With the subsequent rise in tourism to the Redwood country, Minnie opened the first gift shop in the area in the center of her treehouse. Minnie passed away on March 8, 1947 and was buried, according to her wishes, to be amongst her beloved trees for eternity. Dedicated this day, September 24, 2016, Clamp Year 6021 by the Yerba Buena number one chapter of E. Clampus Vitus, they included the credo, Quia Absurdum. And what say the brethren? Satisfactory. Hey, we've already talked about how much I love little side roads, byways, viewpoints, picnic areas. Mm -hmm. This rest stop is awesome. But this is even more interesting. Located along the 395, 
midway between Mammoth Lakes and the June Lake Loop, is the Crestview Rest Area and the location of the Lost Cement Mine Monument. Inconspicuously placed is this rather innocuous monument dedicated to the memory of the men who have come to seek fortune, chasing the legend of the Lost Cement Mine. Cement referred to the way that the gold nuggets were embedded in the rock. Gold nuggets that sometimes were as big as your fist. Dedicated September 6th, 1980. The plaque simply reads, Somewhere near this spot is located the famous Lost Cement Mine. First discovered in 1857, the find was described as a ledge wide as a curbstone of rusty reddish cement two-thirds of it pure gold. Various circumstances prevented the original discoverers from returning to claim their wealth. History indicates the location of the lost cement mine may have been rediscovered and mined periodically until 1877, and then again concealed. An occasional prospector still searches for the elusive treasure, but its location today still remains a secret. If while hiking in the area, you happen to come upon a ledge of pure gold, please notify the nearest ECV chapter so that we might relocate this monument to the correct site. Every year, many people go in search of finding the treasure of the lost slot machines. Slot machines that many believe were hastily dumped into June Lake to avoid the G-Men. You see, back in the 1930s, gambling in Mono County was illegal. But being such a rural and hard to reach area, they were willing to gamble on keeping all those aqueduct workers happy by putting slot machines in just about every cafe, market, bar, just about anywhere that you'd find one of the workers. And so, no one's really sure where the legend came from or how credible it may be. Because many very talented search and rescue teams have gone down and looked for those slot machines over the years. I've even talked to a few of those fellows myself. It's so exciting to think about buried treasure. And at the end of the day, is there or is it just a legend? A distinctive landmark and gathering place used by many early inhabitants of the area for bathing, food preparation, ceremonial, and medicinal purposes. It was named House of the Devil by early explorers for its hot springs, plumes of rising steam, and spectacular geysers. From 1878 to 1881, it was a stage stop along the Bishop Creek Bodie State Route, a vital relay station for supplies, mail, and equipment en route to the mining camps of Mammoth City, that is Mill City, Mineral Park, and Pine City. Unfortunately, when those mines failed, Casa Diablo faltered. After its tenure as a state stop, Casa Diablo endured a succession of business ventures. It was a trading post, seasonal resort, tavern, gas station, grocery store, hardware store, and even a lumber yard until 1983. When it was transformed into a geothermal electric generating plant. Although today, remnants are all that remain of Casa Diablo, it made a lasting contribution to the development of Mono County and the Eastern Sierra. Dedicated September 8th, 2001 by the Bodhi Chapter number 64 of E. Clampus Vitus in the town of Mammoth Lakes. What say the brethren? Satisfactory. One of the main reasons that I call this area home is the caldera just outside of Mammoth Lakes and all the hot springs. There's nothing like an early morning soap. There's nothing quite as delightful is an early morning soak in the natural hot springs. Now again, if you know where I'm at, don't say anything. But like I was saying before, sometimes you gotta take time to treat yourself. Remember, 
When you're out there on the road, keep it between the lines and look out for Smokey because he's looking out for you. And as always, thank you for allowing me to entertain you, presumably. This is The Vic Meyer Show every Wednesday on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. I also do appreciate your comments and look forward to those every week. So keep those coming as well. Enjoy, and I'll see you next week right here on The Vic Meyer Show. Vic Meyer at a very legendary location, Silver Lake, California, at the Silver Lake Resort. And legend has it, this is where Woody Woodpecker was created. At the Silver Lake Resort in June Lake, at the June Lake Loop in California. Uh, it's not as confusing as it sounds. Walter Lance, an American cartoonist, animator, producer, and director, best known for founding Walter Lance Productions and creating Woody Woodpecker. On November 25th, 1940, Lance married actress Grace Stafford. According to Lance himself, he came up with the character during their honeymoon to Silver Lake. He and his new bride became annoyed with the constant pecking of a woodpecker on their roof. Grace suggested to her husband that he use the annoying bird for inspiration. And thus, Woody Woodpecker was born. In 1950, Lance held anonymous auditions for the voice of Woody Woodpecker. Grace, Lance's wife, offered to do Woody's voice. Lance turned her down because Woody was a male character. Undeterred, Grace submitted her own audition tape anonymously and eventually becoming the voice of Woody Woodpecker. Grace supplied Woody's voice until the end of production in 1972. Moreover, the Lances fell in love with the area, eventually buying their own cabin on Silver Lake. They also helped build the library in June Lake and also a ball field in Levine, California. Well, that was fun kicking it around Silver Lake. Hung out here quite a few times. I love breakfast and lunch at this cafe. It is one of the most amazing little cafes anywhere in any hidden little spot. And uh, yeah, I'll be back for sure to enjoy their tuna melt. But in the meantime, uh, Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, learned something. I I didn't even know. Woody Woodpecker? Damn. This has been the Vic Meyer Show. And the origins of Woody Woodpecker. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned.